Skipper Pavilion, an Asian-inspired building with beautiful sculptures, spas, and players who just want Salt Spray Rig back in Splatoon 2. Skipper Pavilion is one of the most beautiful maps in Splatoon 2, which we'll be covering in this episode of the Inkspedition. Skipper Pavilion is a luxurious looking palace that was heavily inspired by Asian culture. There's a Kancho garden near the bottom level of the stage with stone paths and managed vegetation. Of course, a lot of these beautiful decorations are just inked over and played on by these children who not respect such art. Also, why are we playing on this place anyway? Is it not surrounded by water? If we so much as take a dip with our dualies, we're gonna dissolve faster than some expired Kool-Aid food coloring. Wait! Billy, you replaying playing in the water! You'll get hurt! What? I keep playing in the water? I'll get off dirt? Okay. <laughs> Lord, what's the point? Mr. Grizz gave me a life jacket so they ain't gonna save no lives! Friggin' cheapskate! Now, as I was saying before our incident, I don't want to talk about Skipper it. Pavilion, to many, is very reminiscent to Salisbury Rig in Splatoon 1. Sadly, Salisbury didn't come back, so they gave us Skipper. Wait a minute, what do they mean sad? I'm glad Salisbury in Splatoon 2 and Skipper is miles better. Salisbury was unplayable in Rainmaker anyway, having the Rainmaker pedestal at best six feet from the spawn point. They're built in similar ways, with both opponents coming from the sides to fight in a vast middle area consisting of two parts. One that's a nice tranquil dojo and one where actually all the players are. Connected by a narrow pathway that changes elevation at each point. Skipper also has bases on a complete other level, which, in modes like Turf War, can lead to some pretty campy maneuvers. Longer range splatlings and chargers in particular love having fun on that level, being virtually untouched from anyone who approaches. We sent our roller main Skipper Pavilion to see how he would handle these threats. Howdy y'all, it's been a while. I've been recruited to Skipper Pavilion to gather footage and stress test a very special specimen. Ah, there they are, right there. There's always at least one on Skipper, but with four... Oh, what did the boss get me into? Carefully shocked our prey. I learned this technique from studying the legend of the great white shark from the upside down land of Australia. Crikey, am I right, mates? That was freaking terrible. But I'm moving in. Now get out of here quickly, these guys are like bees in a hive. Swat at the hive and you will erupt Krakatoa. Maybe I'll be right here. There's no way that they'll see me here. Oh no. Abort! Ah! Anyway, when you get agitated at dealing with backlines with a bite of a loud chihuahua, you can just chill in the middle of the map. The middle is very vast, so there's no way most backlines are gonna keep it all under control. So the middle is like where everyone else fights. Most, and by most I mean all, fight in the top part of the map where it's at its lowest elevation. As for the dojo at the bottom, people see it, but often just leave it there. I conducted an experiment where the middle of the match I would take the dojo and I would see how long it would take for the enemy team to bother taking it back and how many would try to take it. Okay, we've captured this area, now we wait. Wow, that took a while. You're not taking this, by the way. This map is pretty interesting on the ranked modes. Zones and clamlets are pretty typical, with zones on Skipper being the size of a small football field, and clamlets being how many times is the opponent gonna take the same staircase into our base before he realizes it's a bad idea. But, tower control? <sighs> when people say it's an uphill battle to accomplish what you want, I don't think they meant literally. The endless waves of enemies you have to ward off, especially at checkpoints where you're at their mercy, and they have several high grounds to shoot you from. Oh, and for Rainmaker, at least it isn't six feet away from spawn like it is for Salt Spray. Wait, where the heck is this pedestal? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What am I climbing here, the Burj Khalifa? There ain't no way there should be this many flights of ramps. Well, might as well give it a shot. I expect it no less. And one thing that the beloved Expedition community told us to talk about is the night look for this pavilion. This right here is definitely Skipper's best face. With the lanterns lit, the fireworks in the background, and the night sky, inklings and octolings alike can say each other's differences aside and take a nice picture together or fighting Splatfest, but, but you know, just keep the first one in your head. A very culturally packed map with tiny little details that I hope you won't overlook next time you come here. I've been your host and you've watched The Inkspedition. If you've enjoyed this episode of The Inkspedition, please give us a like and subscribe for more. We want to make sure that we take you on the most in-depth tour with the most in-depth commentary ever. And leave a comment on what map we should do next. See you all next time.